want to welcome all of you today from Berlin, Germany. Today is a very special day because we are launching the next major version of Nextcloud, which is Nextcloud Hub 8. Nextcloud Hub is of course a tool to communicate and collaborate with other people over the internet, which is nowadays very, very important. The main difference, as you might know, to big tech companies is that your data always stays under your control. You can run it wherever you want and it's completely safe. It's also 100% open source, which gives you complete control of your digital life and your digital destiny. What personally really motivates me at Nextcloud is that I don't want to live in a world where like five big tech companies control all our data and all our future. That's a really dystopia for me. So we at Nextcloud, we are providing, we are building better ethical solutions. So we follow our core values and these core values I want to show you now in this video. We believe privacy is a fundamental human right and everybody should access the secure communication free from surveillance. We are building decentralized products as an alternative to centralized platforms. People can choose what they want and where they want it. We believe in open source and open standards. Open source is the only way for users to trust their devices. We value sustainability, protecting people, society and the environment. We believe accessibility is a fundamental human right and technology should be accessible to everyone. The time of our users is very important to us. That's why we do our best to make Nextcloud easy to use. We foster diversity from innovation to transparency and collaboration. Working with our communities and supporting marginalized people leads to a better result. The good thing about Nextcloud Hub is that it's a solution that works for everybody. It's used by home users, it's used by schools, it's used by non-profits, of course by companies. But with this release we want to focus on one specific group, which is the public sector. The public sector are of course like cities, communities, governments, all kinds of organizations who really care about the protection of the data of the citizens. This is why Nextcloud Hub is so important. With this release we improve the performance, the functionality, the flexibility, the speed, like everything, um, but we want to look at the improvements through the lens of the public sector here. And to show you all the great improvements, all the things we did with this release, I want to hand over to the next cloud team to show you all, everything in detail. Hello, everybody. Now let's explore Nextcloud Files. That's where your documents, photos, and videos live. And Nextcloud Files is a powerful document management system, making it easy to access and share your documents wherever you are. Now, today, to make it easier to imagine all the improvements and changes we did in the real workflow, we created an example. It's, we're going to look at the features today through the eyes of a non-profit, the Voice International Alliance. Now, they're a global organization fighting for freedom of speech. We thought that's a nice fit with what we do, of course. And they have a lot of local offices, including Paris and New York. Now, in our story, they're preparing to celebrate World Press Freedom Day. And we followed this team of four people working on this task. Now, running communications, Christine is working on sharing and receiving a ton of documents. Now, you might have this too, and this can be a little overwhelming at times. Now, Nextcloud has a few ways to help you. When you log in, you will find your recommended files on top of the file view. And Nextcloud also keeps track of relations between files. So it shows you documents that are shared with the same people. In the left sidebar, you can find recent files, your favorite files, files that are shared with you, etc. What we added for this release is the personal files. So this just shows you the files that are your files and not have been shared by other people or the company with you. Now, there's another way to find your files and Christine is using this here, search. So she's looking for a human rights report and she finds it here in the chat room by filtering down on the messages specific in this conversation. Now, she wants to review the report before sharing it further. Now, you might find yourself, you know, receiving files in the chat room and then opening them in tabs all the time. Now, with Hub8, you can view and even edit a document right there in the chat. And this is not limited to talk. Christine can also add a link to a file in DAC using the Smart Picker. And then she can choose to have it embedded so she can view it right there in the DAC card. She can scroll through it to see if something is missing. And even cooler, she can click the little edit button and immediately correct the headline, for example, to make it a little bit bigger. 
Now, the Smart Picker is truly a fantastic tool to all, all kinds of links and content to your documents. With the addition of more interactive widgets, it becomes even more powerful. You can see these interactive widgets in the rest of this presentation, and of course, while you are using Nexart Hub. Now, let's go back to Christine. So the report contains some sensitive data. So when Christine shares it, she uses a new feature, the limit download feature, to make sure it is only grabbed once. And of course, she can also allow three downloads or five or any number she likes. Now, once the report is finished, she can create a separate link, which allows sharing it more widely. And that has now been made even easier by generating a QR code. So with the QR code, recipients can simply scan the QR code with their phone to access the file, easy as pie. Now, Christine is working on the report as she needs a couple of nice photos in there, but luckily she has a ton of photos. And so in the photos app, she can browse these pictures. And in Hub8, we made it possible to select a folder where you put all your pictures so that in the photos app, your private photos are not mixed with, you know, the funny gifts that you got in the company's meme chat. So yeah, this was a very much requested feature. So we're very happy that we could bring this to you. Now, we also, speaking of photos, created a nice photo of the day widget. And this shows past pictures from your collection. So, you know, you can enjoy every day a very nice picture that you've taken in the past. Now, before getting to work, Christine's Nexat Hub server was updated with some new apps and features. And with this release, we are now introducing a new pop-up that shows whenever an app was updated and can be filled by the app developer to give you an overview of the improvement that were made to the application. To help administrations find new applications, we also created a new Discover section in our app store that will help developers advertise their application essentially to the wider community. Christine shares the report through Nextcloud and she knows that the recipient can access it even when they're using accessibility tools like a screen reader. Nexart Enterprise was recently given the European Accessibility Certification, often required for public sector and large enterprise use. So many of our customers have been asking about this. So if it's a blocker for you and your organization, reach out to your account manager. We can help you get started with this. There was a ton of stuff, so let me recap. We introduced one-time download links. We let you edit your files right where you are linking them, either in the deck board or in documentation or in talk. And you will see more of this. We gave our photos users one of the top requested features. You can now pick the photos folder. And we did a lot of work on accessibility. So I'm really looking forward to hear what you think of Nexat Hub 8. And next, I want to ask Anna to the stage. Now I'm going to show you what we improved on Nextcloud Grouper apps. Nextcloud Grouper integrates calendar, contacts, mail, and other productivity features to help the teams get the work done faster, easier, and on your terms. At the office of the French affiliate, Advocacy Officer Nicole Ver opens her laptop and is greeted by Nextcloud Mail in the new, efficient two-column view. In her inbox, an email from Nicole Schott stands out, marked urgent and confidential with a one-time download link in the email. Nicole clicks the link and downloads the document into her Nextcloud Hub folder. The mail app is designed to make the life of users like Nicole easier. She can set a reminder on an email, the AI-trained inbox helps her focus on the most important emails, as MIME signatures and encryption make emails safer, and shared mailboxes make collaborative work easier. Now let's look at some new things. Suggested replies. Nicole is particularly happy about suggested replies as a new feature in Hub8. They are generated by the next cloud assistant based on the emails you are reading. While reading this email, Nicole picks one of the suggestions. In this case, Thanks, I'm on it. The answer will be automatically pre-filled in the reply email. Suggested replies know all languages that are supported by the large language model being used. We will talk about more of this later in our presentation. Back at headquarters, Christine needs to book a meeting for which she goes to her calendar app. After adding some of the attendees, it's time to pick a slot. I'm sure you're familiar with that. What time will the others be available? In Hub 8, the calendar will automatically suggest the first time that is free for all attendees, taking into account their meetings, their configured office hours, and their time zones. Christine likes the suggestion and accepts it, sending invites to Nicole and Adrian. Christine is adding some information to the talk room for the meeting she planned. Via the smart picker, she embeds the calendar and link in the chat of the talk room. 
Now everyone in the team will see the project schedule for this month. Let's look at these features in action in this video. Nextcloud Groupware helps you handle your email, tasks, and meetings. It is designed to make your life easier, using the Nextcloud Assistant to save you time. For example, when reading mail, you might bump into a message you think warrants a team discussion. When you then create a meeting from Nextcloud Mail, the Assistant will suggest a relevant title and description based on that mail. There are more challenges in mail beyond creating tasks and calendar invitations, of course. Managing your email workload can be a big task. The Nextcloud Assistant is there to help you, summarizing long email discussions. And when you have to answer emails, it proposes answers to save you time. You just choose the best reply, make your own edits, and send it out. Our Calendar app is also smart. We all face that challenge of coordinating meetings with multiple colleagues, each with their own busy schedules. Nextcloud Calendar helps you out, suggesting the first available time slot that works for everybody you wanted to invite, taking into account their availability and time zones. Nextcloud Groupware is widely accessible from other applications in Nextcloud Hub. You can share a deck card in a talk room or link to a calendar. This integration means Nextcloud Hub is more than the sum of its parts, giving you and your team more and more efficient ways of finding, sharing, and working on data. We look forward to hear how Nextcloud Hub helps you be productive and what ideas you might have to improve things even further. Together, we make Nextcloud better. We made a lot of improvements in Groover to make your work life easier. I personally think Embedded Calendars is my favorite feature. What is yours? I want to ask Dimitra from our design team to the stage to talk about improvements in Office and collaboration. Let's look at the improvements in Nextcloud Office. Nextcloud Office is a powerful online Office suite with collaborative editing. It supports all major document, spreadsheet, and presentation file formats and works in all modern browsers. Nextcloud Office is built together with Collabora productivity. Let's take a look at how Annalise, Christine, and their colleagues team up to get stuff done. In this release, we evolved our Circles feature into Teams. Teams is how you can create and manage groups as a user. Teams are created and managed in the Contacts app. Any user can create their own teams and see and join other teams. A team can be for your own organization or open for others to join. There are also some security features configurable for teams, like password-protected shares. Now that Christine has created her team, she can see the team members on the page. And below that, there's an overview of resources shared with the team, like chat rooms, storage spaces, documentation, calendars, project boards, and so much more. So let's see the team's feature in action. Our new Teams feature in Hub8 is designed to make managing groups easier than ever. We simplified the handling of various access levels and permissions and made it easier to see what resources are shared with the team. Teams can be created in the Contacts app. There you can add team members and decide how you will manage the team going forward. Whether it's facilitating the sharing of a comprehensive knowledge base via collectives, accessible to all pertinent teams, or granting project leads exclusive access to Nextcloud Deck, our integrated project Kanban tool. The Teams feature simplifies management and access control throughout the hub. So that was the Teams feature in Nextcloud Hub, a game changer for team collaboration. Now let's take a look at Annalise, who is responsible for managing an event for the World Press Freedom Day. She has to work on personal notes, as well as edit and share agendas and other documents, so lots of work which requires real-time document editing with her coworkers. And the good news for her is that these features are already deeply embedded throughout Nextcloud. Furthermore, Annelise wants to gather attendee insights through a survey during this event. And for this, she uses Nextcloud Forms, setting up an online questionnaire. She links this form to a corresponding Nextcloud spreadsheet. This new feature sends real-time updates to the spreadsheet with each new entry in forms. And this integration transforms the spreadsheet into a dynamic, organized repository of survey participant data. To maintain some data integrity, 
since she's collaborating across various VIA departments, Annalise locks the cells in the spreadsheet. The simple measure guarantees that the collected data remains unaltered. And to spread the word about the survey, Annalise also wants to share some background info about the survey in some flyers. And she does this by making a collective page with the survey info and creating a public link to the page. She pastes this link into the insert QR code feature in Nextcloud Office. A QR code is automatically created, which she inserts into the flyer. And now anyone can scan it to easily read up on and participate in the survey. We talked about how to find and handle your data across documents, but Nextcloud is also a powerhouse when it comes to handling structured data. Nextcloud tables allows you to track a variety of information, supporting a range of content types, including links to Nextcloud resources like talk rooms, deck cards, and so on. Say your organization uses Nextcloud tables to track vacations, release schedules, and for managing events. So when you want to request some time off, you have to find the vacation request table. But in Nextcloud Hub 8, we've introduced a much quicker way to access these tables. With Hub 8, you can bundle your tables into an app. Pick any number of views from any number of tables, create an app, and users can find them in the top bar. Now, entering or reviewing vacation requests just means going to the app and doing your thing. Let's see what all this looks like in a video. Last year, we transformed data sharing and workflow management in Hub with the launch of Nextcloud Tables. This feature acts as a no-code platform, allowing users to create customizable tables for various data types, such as text, links, numbers, progress bars, star ratings, and much more. Tables makes it easy to design, manage, and share your data within and outside your organization. Now with Hub 8, we've improved tables even further by introducing applications for tables. This new functionality enables users to aggregate and combine different tables and views into comprehensive applications, directly accessible from the Nextcloud app's menu bar. Imagine streamlining your HR processes with an integrated HR application for vacation requests, with a specific table for pending, approved, and manager pending approvals. Combine this with a table for travel expenses awaiting approval and reimbursement. With all this information consolidated into a single application, your HR workflow becomes more efficient and accessible. With the new applications for tables in Hub 8, you control your data and flows easily, efficiently, and collaboratively. So that was Nextcloud Tables, our all-in-one solution for structured data, and we hope you enjoy using it. These are some big improvements, but before closing, I want to mention a few more, because as always, there is a ton more going on. Nextcloud Office in Hub 8 will give you a major performance boost. Enjoy significantly faster document access and smoother operations thanks to various optimizations, such as a half document load time, 18 times faster processing for quicker viewing, seamless background saving that eliminates interruptions during work, and many other performance improvements. We're also excited to share how Nextcloud Hub 8 brings major improvements to PDF functionality, focusing on enhancing accessibility and collaboration. Nextcloud Hub 8 exports documents to PDF 1.7 by default, making documents more accessible and adaptable across different devices. And with hybrid PDFs, you can now embed an editable ODF document into a PDF, enhancing document flexibility and collaboration. In every release, Nextcloud Office ensures interoperability improvements to ensure a seamless experience across different platforms. In Hub 8, we've improved compatibility with Google Sheets, so copy-pasting data no longer means losing formatting. We've also improved the SVG support for crystal clear visuals and introduced compatibility with EMF graphics. Another exciting improvement is Smart Justify, making switching from Microsoft Word to Nextcloud Office ever so smooth. That last improvement, Smart Justify, was actually supported by the European Commission and NLNet, showing the synergy achieved when public entities and open source communities join forces. So those are the improvements in Nextcloud Office for Hub 8. My personal favorite is being able to create your own little apps using tables 
and the introductions of the Teams feature. But tell us what you think as well. And for the next major improvement, I want to ask Jocelyn onto the stage. Hi, everyone. I'm pleased to introduce our major improvements and new features for Nextcloud Talk. Nextcloud Talk keeps your online conversations, meetings, and video conferences private and secure. Combining live chat with video conferences and presenting tools, Nextcloud Talk is a well-rounded video chat, a perfect webinar platform, and real collaboration powerhouse. Let's go back to Christine and one of my favorite new features on Talk. She was excited to see Adrian's message pop up on her smartphone. She replied and didn't notice his typo. In Hub 8, messages can now be edited quickly and easily. It's a real lifesaver. Christine needs to discuss the World Press Freedom Day event timeline with her team. She creates a table inside the text file with the proposed timeline and shares it in a talk conversation. She copies the table from the text file and pastes it into talk. In Hub 8, talk can nicely display markdown tables. Now the team can offer feedback on the timeline even from their smartphones. As a further addition, when in a call in Nextcloud Talk, you can now see the speaker in a bubble during a screen share. And if they're blocking an important part of the slide, you can move the bubble around. Now it's time for the volunteer orientation call. During events, all of them must wear the same t-shirt. Using polls in the Talk app, Adrian asks them to vote for the color. Hub 8 brings polls front and center in the call. Nobody can miss it. Adrian has to submit a project proposal for the Legal Advocacy and Support Program. Thanks to the interactive files widgets introduced in Hub 8, he can ask the team to add their feedback directly in the file without leaving the call. Adrian opens the Smart Picker and selects Files. In the File Manager, he finds the project proposal and embeds an interactive widget directly in the chat. Now all team members can add their notes in the documents without opening any files, a useful feature for collaboration within remote teams. We're hopping back to Christine. As a communications coordinator, she's in charge of the onboarding process for new regional affiliates. Today, she's onboarding a new partner in the US. Regional partners maintain their own on-premise Nextcloud server to ensure data sovereignty, security, and privacy. These separate Nextcloud instances complicate communication a little. You'd want to be able to chat with multiple people in one place, of course, but having an account on each of these servers isn't really easy to manage. VIA relies on Nextcloud Talk to communicate with the original affiliates, leveraging the new federated chats in Hub 8. This way, people can join chat rooms even if they're not all on the same server. Let me show you how easy that is. Christine uses Adrian's cloud ID to invite him to the group conversation. Adrian sees a notification. It's Christine's invitation to join their talk group chat. He accepts the requests and messages Christine from his local Nextcloud server to say hi. Let's review the new features that we've just discussed. Nextcloud Talk allows your team to communicate anytime, anywhere while giving you full control over your data, your privacy, and your security. Previously, when you communicated with external users, such as customers, partners, and others, you had to invite them as guests to your Nextcloud instance. Now in Hub 8, you don't need to explicitly invite external users as guests to allow them to access your Nextcloud talk conversations. With federated chats, you can now invite external Nextcloud users with their cloud ID to join your conversations. When they accept your invite, they will be able to participate in your conversation without ever leaving their own Nextcloud instance. You will remain in full control as the conversation data never leaves your Nextcloud instance. Oh no, you've misspelled good in your message with only one O. No worries. In Hub 8, you can now edit your messages and talk on desktop and mobile apps. No need to delete messages and rewrite to correct them. With Hub 8, we also made talk messages richer with the addition of support for tables, task lists, strike through, and more. Personalize and share your ideas easier and faster today. Teams across thousands of organizations use video conferencing in Nextcloud Talk for virtual meetings and webinars. 
Our polls features is there to help you collect information and feedback from a large audience on a call. The polls now show up on the top of the screen, so nobody will miss them. Sharing files in Nextcloud Talk is always easy. We offered rich link previews, showing you information about deck cards or a preview of images. We now also give you the contents of documents like PDFs, note files, and even full office documents. Beyond showing them, we went a step further and made it possible for you to edit the notes of a call or add a quick item to the table in an office document right there in your chat. We made many more small improvements in Nextcloud Talk, like how we show the speaker who is sharing their screen during a call, or how you can now test your speakers in the devices setting before you join a call. This release of Nextcloud Hub brings you the best version yet, making your calls and daily chat easier and more fun than ever. We hope you will enjoy Nextcloud Talk, and we look forward to your feedback. And that's it. Let me recap. For this Nextcloud Hub 8 release, we introduce nice presenter bubbles and screen shares, federated chatting, and more. One of my personal favorite updates is definitely message editing. I'm really glad this is now possible in talk. I'm now going to hand over to Jos for the next improvements. At the end of the day, you want to finish your last tasks and go home. And of course, you shouldn't have to wait for next cloud. So we always put in a lot of effort to speed things up. Now, performance and scalability not only help lower the cost of running a next cloud instance, but more efficient software also is better for the environment by reducing energy use. So Nextcloud already scales really well. It scales from very small devices like a Raspberry Pi all the way up to a big Kubernetes setup where you can have millions of users on a single cluster. For example, such a large setup is running for Magenta Cloud at Deutsche Telekom. Now, sometimes you want an even bigger setup. You want to be able to handle even more users. And for that, we have our unique global scale architecture. Now, with global scale, you can have tens of millions of users, even hundreds of millions, on an Excel service running distributed over multiple data centers, even on different continents. One example of this is the Claro Drive service of America Mobile. This service has over 20 million users and is distributed over four different housing centers in Central and South America using Nextcloud Global Scale. However, we're always working to improve scalability even further. With this and future releases, we are working on database sharding. This means that the Nextcloud database can be split up into several smaller databases which can then be run, distributed over multiple servers. The base work for this change is already available in Hub 8. We will continue to implement these features over the next few months. So that's one improvement, but we are doing a second improvement to the database. And this is improving the read after write behavior of the database. Now with the current architecture, Nextart requires synchronous replication, which means if you're trying to run a clustered database, you are limited to about four nodes. Now in the future, we want to support unlimited read nodes that are using asynchronous replication. This improvement, which is already part of Hub 8, together with the database sharding, will really level up the scalability of Nextcloud. And we expect that you will be able to run up to 10 times more users on a single Nextcloud cluster, which means lower costs, higher efficiency, and of course, better energy use. Now, in addition to improving the scalability of very big instances, we also wanted to improve the performance of the day-to-day -day use of Nextcloud. So we made a ton of improvements that will make use of Nextcloud snappier overall in the front end. A few examples of these changes are on the left, and you can see some examples of the results on the right. So we've really been working on reducing the amount of data that is sent to the browser when you log in and when you load pages, in the end, over 100 megabyte of JavaScript no longer has to be sent to the browser. And this will really help give a lighter, faster feel to Nextcloud. So summarizing between the database work and the front end improvement, Nextcloud won't keep you waiting anymore. Now, next, I want to ask Marcel from our sales engineering team to the stage. I will cover our work in the area of artificial intelligence. At Nextcloud, we want to offer AI to make your life easier. 
but we also want to be transparent about the downsides. Therefore, we created our ethical AI rating system to help you decide which AI is right for you. We give each AI integration a score, red, orange, yellow or green. This is based on three factors that address some of the key concerns with AI. First is the software open source that allows you to adapt the training, perhaps fix bias or optimize energy usage. Second is the model freely available. This allows you to run it wherever you want, including your own data center so your data doesn't leak. Third is the training data available. That way you can look for bias and other issues and retrain the model to your liking. We not only provide transparency with our AI implementations, but also choice. We have taken a different approach from others and want you to have the choice between the various AI options. So we worked hard to ensure that for all features like translation, text processing or dictation, we offer multiple options with on-premise and remote choices. In this way, Nextload already makes it possible to use AMRI remote services like ChatGPT, DALL-E or Deepo. But our focus is to build and provide true open source and local AI, which is sync with our values and our ethical AI rating system. Now, AI is becoming an integral part of Nextcloud. Great thing, AI and machine learning have been a part of Nextcloud Hub in many ways, both obvious in recent releases and working in the background for you already. For example, these AI machine learning features in Nextcloud already run and are 100% open source. We have face and object recognition that doesn't send your photo to third parties. Our smart inbox and mail is trained on your data on your server and all code transcripts are generated locally as well, just to name a few of them. You can find these integrations in many places in Nextcloud. For example, you can find translation in our text app, but also in the video chat application Nextcloud Talk. Or you can generate an image in both of them as well. Last year, we introduced you to Nextcloud Assistant, the industry first AI assistant hosted completely on your server. It's based on a large language model, it's 100% open source and fully runs on-premise with no data sent to third parties. With nearly complete overhaul of the user interface and how our AI system works at the back end, plus a ton of new big features, we decided that this is the moment to call this the Assistant 2.0. Let's see the Assistant in action. Here, Christine asks the Assistant for tips for organizing her event. The Assistant will then get to work finding an answer for her. And when done, it provides the result to the request. In this case, some very useful tips for organizing an online event. And this can run entirely on-premise using local open source large language models. Christine also relies on the assistant to summarize those long wilded email threads, saving her time when reading them. Christine is preparing for the WordPress Freedom Day. And she can now record her voice and have the assistant transcribe it. But you might see one of the major features of this release in this dialogue already. Context write. Next cloud, context write allows you to give the assistant instructions on the style and format you wanted to write something. Let's look how Christine uses it. Christine has to present a major sponsor with a sponsored brief about the legal advocacy and support program that they are considering to fund. Nextcloud Write gives her a flying start. She starts by giving Context Write the sponsor brief of a previous project, a journalist safety program, as an example of what she wants. Then she puts in the project proposal of the legal advocacy program as input for Context Write. Now, Context Write goes to work, taking both documents and creating a new sponsor briefing for the legal advocacy program. Of course, she has to have a look and check at the document, but this draft saved a ton of time. An extra trip for Christine. The assistant keeps earlier requests so you can copy the results or rerun the same request. You can also cancel running requests, very handy in case you decide you want to change your query. Meanwhile, 
Nicole has received an email from Christine about the coordination of the project. She reads the email and considers the proposed replies from the assistant, but decides it's better to set up a meeting. The next iCloud assistant saves her time suggesting not only the event name, but also a quick description of the topics based on the email. All she has to do is to pick the time and get on with her other tasks. Now, do you know the feeling when you get in the morning and there are 100 new messages in the chat room? It bothers Christine no more because she knows the trick. She uses the brand new SumAI bot with the Nextcloud, which can generate a daily or weekly summary of all messages in every chat room for you. You are caught up in minutes in this way. But the chat had a question for Christine. When will the audio and video equipment arrive in Paris? This is where context chat comes in. While context write can write text for you, context chat allows you to ask questions about document and data within your next cloud. Let's have a look. Context chat has indexed all your files and documentation and can also learn information from other apps like mail, calendar, deck, and talk. So if you, know you need to know the vacation process in your organization, you can simply ask. Content checked will find the answer in the documentation. To improve the accuracy of the answer by context chat, you can select the source. Going back to the audio video equipment arrival, Christine knew the answer was in a file that had a pricing code. So she opened the assistant, selected the document, and then asked the question, what time will the material arrive? Just after a moment, the answer is in. The audio video equipment will arrive in Paris at 8.30 on May 3rd. When dealing with a large amount of information, as we all do this day, I think context chat will be a huge help. This covers our major second new feature, context chat. However, we brought the assistant now also to your mobile devices. You can simply open the assistant in the Nextcloud app and enter your query. The result can then be copied and pasted into other apps. And remember, with context chat, the assistant can answer questions about your own documents. And with context write, the assistant can use some context like meeting notes plus an example and write complex documents for you. We made other improvements to the assistant. It now supports GPU acceleration. We added new large language models, but you are no longer limited to the LLMs we support. The AI field is moving quickly, so you can now add LLMs yourself whenever they become available without having to wait for us. We've also made it possible to run the AI features on a separate server so you can put in optimized hardware like some GPUs. Last but not least, we are working with major European cloud providers, IONOS and OVH, to offer AI as a service solutions. This way, you don't have to have a huge budget for GPUs. You will have a trustworthy, privacy-respecting AI cloud option to choose from. Let's have a look at these features and more in a short video. The Nextcloud AI Assistant is the first open source and locally hosted AI assistant that helps you write content, keep up with email and chat, and much more without leaking your data. Today, we introduce version two of our assistant, bringing more functionality and a much improved interface to you. How do you find the right information in all the documents you have? The assistant is here to help you. The context chat feature allows the assistant to use your documents to answer your questions. This means you won't get a generic answer, but can explicitly ask when equipment arrives for the World Press Freedom Day, which can be answered from one of your documents. Are you often working on reports or have to fill in forms? Need to match the tone and style used in your organization? Maybe you want to write a memo just like your colleague did last week. In Hub 8, We've introduced Context Write in Nextcloud Assistant 2.0. Context Write can help you create content like that. You simply provide a sample style or describe the style you need, and Context Write will rewrite your content in that style. Now your content will match your CEO's style as if she wrote it herself. The Nextcloud Assistant can do more than generate text. You can also create images based on a description. 
Another integrated ability is transcription of audio. You can record it right there or point the assistant to an audio file that needs to be transcribed. Whenever the tasks are done, they are added to the list of completed, canceled, and pending AI tasks. This allows you to cancel, delete, and retry tasks. Now you can manage your time and work more efficiently with full visibility and control over your AI tasks in NextCloud Assistant. NextCloud Talk simplifies communication, enabling your team to stay connected effortlessly, regardless of location or device. Bots in Talk can help summarize calls or bring content from external services like a ticketing system into your chats. Also having a hard time keeping up with all these chat rooms? With Hub8, we have introduced our first AI bot in NextCloud Talk. Summer AI is an AI chatbot that uses advanced natural language processing techniques to analyze chat threads and extract the key points. You can schedule the bot to create summaries at a requested time. This way, it's easier than ever to stay up to date with the conversations in your organization. Your NextCloud Assistant is not only available in your browser, but we've also integrated it in our mobile apps. This way, you can ask questions about your data and use its other functions wherever you are. AI has specific, heavy hardware requirements. To help you balance the requirements and resource costs, we made it possible to run the AI workload on a separate server, perhaps equipped with GPUs in your own data center. It is also possible to offload some or all AI workloads to a third-party data center, a cloud service from major cloud companies like OVH and IONOS. We've made NextCloud AI Assistant 2.0 smarter, faster, and more useful to help you save time and be more productive. There are many under-the-hood improvements that give you more control over the AI Assistant. We've added two new large language models in Hub8, Neutral Beagle 14 and Smog. Plus, now you can easily hot-swap large language models anytime you need without waiting for us to release new models. We hope you'll enjoy using NextCloud Assistant 2.0, and we look forward to your feedback to continue improving open source AI Assistant for everyone. Let me recap. We introduced Context Chat about your own documents, text written your way with Context Write, replies and emails, Samurai Bot for NextCloud Talk, and many more. All these features from Assistant 2.0 are real time saver and available from any device. Now, I would like to direct your attention toward the bigger picture. Over the last half an hour, you've seen how NextCloud facilitates the work of Christine, Annalise, and many others. With this release, we brought NextCloud to a newer level, and this is the digital hub where users get work done. This hub function means NextCloud connects to and integrates with other tools used in a modern organization. An organization might, for example, use Microsoft Windows on their laptops, Android on the phones. Some departments might use WebEx. Other departments have an open project set up for project management. And the organization might share knowledge using XWiki. All these and many more will work seamlessly with NextCloud. And as Microsoft in particular is very dominant in the industry, NextCloud features a series of integration technologies with SharePoint, Active Directory, and Microsoft Outlook or MS Teams. A new integration that we recently released is with Paperless, an open source document management solution. It makes it easy to organize and search through your paperwork, supporting a variety of features like OCR to make this much easier. Next, I would like to pivot toward our developer community. Whether you're building a mobile app that needs to connect to NextCloud, you want to integrate an independent web app, or building a dedicated NextCloud app, our APIs are nicely documented for you. As you might recall, Last year, we introduced the ability to build apps and languages beyond PHP. This uses our OCS API, and we made several SDKs available to simplify the work for developers. Not only does this allow you to pick your favorite language, but apps 
using this framework can't interfere with other apps in Nextcloud. We can maintain stable APIs and the admin can distribute resources running heavy services on a different server with appropriate hardware. Last but not least, this all brings security benefits as well. With this release come some new features for external apps. First, we have created a way for these apps to define a settings screen for admins or users using a declarative syntax. Second, we made it possible to inject a full user interface into Nextcloud. There's already menu integration and files, modification support and a chatbot API. Apps can now have some significant integration capabilities and we are always working on more. Next, the administrators will appreciate it. We brought our AI integration to the new external app framework, making it possible to run these various AI features on separate servers. Last but not least, if you're the developer of an external app in our contributor ecosystem, you can now use our trans effects to get help from our awesome translation community. We want to help you to get started building apps, so we wrote two new tutorials. First, a hello world for app developers to get started easier than ever before. And second, we introduce a tutorial for using GitHub code spaces as a development environment. You can find these and many other tutorials if you go to our nextcloud.com slash developer. The best place to get started building apps for Nextcloud. And then when you finally created your app and released the new version, it's important to tell the users what you changed, new features, bug fixes, enhancements, and more. In Hub 8, users will receive timely notifications about app updates, ensuring they stay informed about your changes. Of course, not every user will already know your app. So we also introduced the new discovery section in the App Store. This will help administrators discover your application, hopefully bring it to a much bigger audience. Of course, there's always a lot more going on into the next cloud developer ecosystem. We have been improving our App Store steadily over the last month. And we now add the ability to users to report comments as ban. And for PHP app developers, we introduced a new routing mechanism, which simplifies the code. If you are a developer, please don't hesitate to share your feedback on where we should focus our effort to improve your experience even further. We look forward to the apps you develop. And before letting Frank close this keynote, I want to say again that this would not have been possible without our amazing community. Thank you for making Nextcloud what it is. And if you too want to get involved, you can check out our website and find out how. Thanks to all the awesome presenters. I think this is a really, really big release and I think the most awesome so far. Nextcloud Hub 8 really, really rocks. So for example, we have the one-time download feature, which was requested a lot, and this is super useful. We have the interactive widgets. I mean, this is a really super innovative, groundbreaking feature. We have the Teams feature to organize your um, collaboration between your team members a lot better. That's really nice. In Excel Talk, you can edit messages. We have the new Federation feature, the Federated Chatting, which is really, really innovative and great. The presenter overlays on lots of other smaller improvements. In Calendar, we have the improved automatic free and busy support to just make your life a lot easier. You have an improved UI and speed in Nextcloud Mail. We have the super cool AI features, for example, suggesting uh, replies to your emails. The Tables app got improved with application support. Office got a ton faster, so really, really good. Um, we have easier sharing in collectives. And of course, the super innovative AI features around context chat and context writer. So everything together is a super nice release. So the Nextcloud team is really, really proud about all the achievements that were done for this release. But let's also hear some other voices. My name is Andreas Klotz and I manage the local Hyphus Cloud cluster at uh, Helmholtz Centrum Berlin. And uh, I probably have to expand a bit on that. So Helmholtz Association is the biggest research organization in Germany. We have 18 research centers uh, all across Germany with uh, up to 40,000 employees. And uh, Hyphus is uh, a, a platform which is tasked with providing digital services for science and we do that by providing federated services to them 
Um, we have the HIFIS backbone cluster, they do networking and uh, federated identity. And we have the uh, HIFIS software cluster, they do uh, research software, engineering, education. So educating uh, scientists on how to program and program in a sustainable way. And then there's the HIFIS software cluster where I'm working at and we are tasked with uh, providing the Helmholtz cloud which is a platform where Helmholtz centers can provide their services, which they already have in operation, to other Helmholtz centers. What factors influence your decision to choose Nextcloud as your content collaboration platform over other solutions? As for HIFIS, actually, we just looked around in Helmholtz and noticed there's Nextcloud everywhere. We already had uh, eight running, at least eight running instances that I know of, of Nextcloud within Helmholtz. So uh, our task was basically to just find them and bring them together. And I cannot really speak for the centers themselves and how, how the decision was made, but I reckon it has lots of to do with uh, the very strong open source commitment by Nextcloud and uh, how, how much we can be in control of our own data by using Nextcloud. What tangible benefits or positive changes have you experienced within your organization since the implementation of Nextcloud? So with Nextcloud, collaboration for researchers has become really intuitive. So you always know if, if you want to collaborate with some, somebody, you just send them a Nextcloud link and they know their way around already. And um, we also feel that uh, we're much more in control of our data. And uh, the, like with, with all the conferences, scientific conferences and so on, um, we just uh, know that wherever we go, we have our data with us, being, be, it, be it with uh, sync clients or uh, in the web, uh, accessing it via Wi-Fi or a mobile network. Um, and it's still at a secure place. Are there any specific features or functionalities of Nextcloud that align particularly well with your organization's needs or priorities? especially for HIFUS, that would absolutely be the federation features. So we, we love the federated login possibility. I'm able to use my HZB credentials to log in and the other Nextcloud instances, for example. And uh, even more importantly, the open cloud mesh uh, capabilities. So being able to share between Nextcloud instances is very important for us. Können Sie sich und Ihre Organisation kurz vorstellen? Mein Name ist Sven Thomsen, ich bin CIO des Landes Schleswig-Holstein und bin verantwortlich für die IT oder die Digitalisierung in der Landesverwaltung. Wir sind also eine klassische Landesverwaltung, bestehend aus Ministerien und einzelnen Bereichen, die unterhalb der Ministerien arbeiten, machen also im Prinzip Ministeriumsarbeit, das Erzeugen von Texten, Dokumenten. Das ist, was wir tun. Wir sind knapp 40.000 Nutzerinnen und Nutzer auf knapp 25.000 Arbeitsplätzen immer mehr tatsächlich auch ausschließlich auf Laptops und Mobilen unterwegs. Welche konkreten Vorteile oder positiven Veränderungen haben Sie in Schleswig-Holstein seit der Einführung von Nextcloud festgestellt? Wir merken, dass sich die Zusammenarbeit und das gemeinsame Arbeiten an Dokumenten komplett geändert hat. Es ist eben nicht mehr einfach das Versenden von Dateien ähm, und dann eben das Rückholen von Dateien, wo dann eine arme Seele dann entsprechend zusammensitzt und verschiedene Dateiversionen so zusammenführen man, dass es wieder ein konsistenter Stand ist, sondern wir arbeiten gemeinsam an zentral vorgehaltenen Informationen und regeln nur noch den Zugriff darauf. Das ist das, was sich jetzt in der Arbeit wesentlich ändert und eine der wesentlichen Funktionen ist, die Nextcloud tatsächlich auch für uns bereitstellt. Was sind Ihre zukünftigen Pläne oder Bestrebungen, um die Nutzung von Nextcloud in Schleswig-Holstein zu erweitern? Wir sehen, dass wir in zwei Szenarien, glaube ich, jetzt einfach Traktion gewinnen. Das eine ist beim Ablösen von alten Infrastrukturen. Die klassischen Gruppenlaufwerke, Gruppenablagen, Abteilungs- oder Referatsserver, die genutzt wurden, um einfach Zusammenarbeit zu organisieren, die können komplett wegfallen und wir können quasi alles das, was mit ich gehe mit Dateien und Informationen um in klassischen Bürokontext, das können wir auf Nextcloud ablösen und auch zentralisieren. Das heißt, da fällt auch ein viel großer Teil noch von bestehender Restinfrastruktur weg. Das Zweite ist, dass wir sehen, dass wir einfache datenbasierte Zusammenarbeitsszenarien tatsächlich auch neu denken können. Ich hatte eben das Thema Versenden von Tabellen gedacht, der Zwischenschritt gesagt, 
Der Zwischenschritt ist ja relativ simpel, dass wir in die Richtung gehen, dass wir eine Tabelle zentral bereitstellen. Aber eigentlich wollen wir auch das nicht, sondern wir wollen an den Daten arbeiten. Und ich glaube, dass mit Nextcloud Tables als Beispiel wir durchaus in den Punkt kommen, dass wir auch klassische Fachverfahren, ein Begriff, den es nur in der öffentlichen Verwaltung offensichtlich gibt, damit ablösen können, indem wir uns einfach überlegen, dass wir die Datenstrukturen in Nextcloud auch hinterlegen. Bonjour, donc Vincent Fouquet. Je suis responsable de la BU Éducation et Collectivité au sein du GIP CIB, donc GIP Groupement Intérêt Public. Euh, le CIB est l'ancien syndicat interhospitalier breton, donc qui travaille essentiellement à la fourniture de services numériques, en l'occurrence le DPICH, pour les groupements hospitaliers de territoire. Historiquement, depuis plus de 30 ans, le CIB est orienté service de santé publique et depuis quelques années a développé une nouvelle activité qui concerne les collectivités et l'éducation. Donc, euh, que l'on retrouve au sein de la direction des services collectivités numériques et éducation, dont dépend ma BU, euh, qui s'occupe principalement de fournir des services informatiques pour les collèges auprès des départements. Nescloud, c'est une solution que nous déployons auprès des collèges pour les élèves et pour les enseignants. Euh, c'est une solution qui permet le partage de fichiers, la collaboration entre élèves et enseignants, et qui surtout nous offre une sécurité très importante du point de vue de notre métier qui est la maîtrise complète du périmètre technique euh, de l'environnement, donc du déploiement jusqu'à la fourniture de services. Et ce n'est pas anodin qui nous fournit aussi la possibilité de l'accessibilité, c'est-à-dire dans l'ensemble du collège et aussi en dehors du collège, à domicile, chez les grands-parents ou en mobilité, pour aussi bien la population des enseignants que des élèves. Alors l'infrastructure pour la partie éducation est un peu euh, particulière puisqu'elle est... Euh, euh, pour faire simple, isolé au sein du data center du CIB, de façon à ne pas avoir de mutualisation avec des outils de santé. On n'est pas du tout sur le même métier, mais on a le même niveau de sécurité en termes d'infrastructure. C'est-à-dire qu'aujourd'hui, un élève dans son collège va par le biais d'une infra locale que nous allons gérer, accéder à l'installation Nescloud qui est hébergée dans les data centers du CIB à Rennes. Donc aujourd'hui, Nescloud, c'est un cloud souverain, finalement, euh, géré par le CIB et mis à disposition d'une population d'usagers qui sont dans l'apprentissage du numérique. Alors il y en a un très principal en fait, vraiment qui a été une évidence, euh, c'est que lorsqu'il a commencé à être déployé, on a accompagné les enseignants et les élèves à son usage et on a conduit une forme de, de changement dans l'usage. Et aujourd'hui, si jamais on doit arrêter euh, pour maintenance, pour évolution, euh, pour, euh, enfin pour différentes raisons, si on doit arrêter le cloud, on doit prévoir des solutions de contournement ou de, de mise à disposition des documents parce qu'en fait, c'est rentré dans les mœurs, c'est rentré dans les habitudes. Et aujourd'hui, ni les élèves, ni les enseignants ne s'en passeraient dans les établissements. La simplicité d'usage. Aujourd'hui, on voit bien... Euh, on a commencé à déployer les collèges, le confinement est arrivé, ça a permis de maintenir en fait, l'activité éducative, ça a permis le partage, l'accessibilité aux documents, et c'est un outil, et c'est très parlant, dont aujourd'hui les enseignants peuvent plus passer. Thanks to everyone for such great endorsements. I'm really happy to see that the work of Nextcloud community is making lives of millions of users better and of course more secure. Everything we showed you today is 100% open source and available for download today. So you can just immediately go there and try it. Thanks to everyone who contributed to this great release and thanks a lot for joining us today. Enjoy this great release.